one of the things I wanted to talk to you today was how the narcissist, even in the trauma bond, how they get you bonded to them, how they get you flipped upside down, is when they're love bombing you, you're also getting red flags. And when you're getting those red flags, it's having you run them over or they're getting camouflaged with the love bombing. And that's why in the very beginning, when the narcissist love bombs you, they do it so much, meaning they always want your time. That way, if they're not with you, then they're gonna text you and call you a lot. If they are with you, then they're gonna love you to death in, in person and physical form. But one way or another, they're going to be love bombing you the whole time. And so that's why they call it the love bomb phase because it is all, every time you're with them, it's love bomb mode. And the reason is, is because if you, even if you didn't hone your intuition, you would maybe catch on. You would probably catch on, but the love bombing is, is camouflaging it and having, because your intuition is telling you something weird is going on. And when your intuition tells you something weird is going on, or if something is a threat to you, which I can, you can always rewind with your intuition. That's pretty interesting and remember it. I think the empath, that's one of our gifts is like, we can remember things because we feel the emotions. And so we, to feel the emotions, you have to know everything about what you're looking at and what you're dealing with. And that's why when we wake up to this through our intuition, we get real keen, almost on a level that's metaphysical and spiritual. And that's why some of us, at least I would say a lot of us, know that there is a demonic presence. You know, so I saw faces and things, but you may not have, but you still know it's demonic in nature. And that's because when an empath is in tune with everything, it's not just in tune with the physical, you know, atmosphere of things, but the, the metaphysical and the spiritual aspects of it as well. We catch the whole vibe of the room. And that's why I think that we have a good memory. So they say the narcissist has a good memory and we're the flip from the narcissist. You know, they're our nemesis. So we have similarities on the opposite spectrum. So it's kind of like if there's, you know, God and Satan, they're similar in opposition meaning that God is all love, Satan is all evil. God is perfect common sense, Satan is perfect senselessness. So that's what I mean by that. It's kind of like uh, Satan was part of the family of God before he defected. And just like that, you and the narcissist were in the same family before. And it's the opposite, it's like you defected. Because in heaven, it's the opposite of the earth. So in heaven, everybody, everything was sound, sound mind, sound living in perfection. So Satan had to fall because not all of heaven's going to fall, right? So heaven's going to stay intact. Satan had to fall. But on this earth system, uh, you know, he had to defect. But on this earth system, we had to defect because this is his kingdom. So now we're in the kingdom of darkness, right? Because it's ruled by the enemy uh, for quite a while because of the sin, the sin in the Garden of Eden. So we are the ones that have to defect because we go against the system. And it's, it, it's I, I always say that the narcissist is the mark of the beast in the physical form because I couldn't imagine anything else being the mark of the beast. I mean, that's how you would have to operate, at least similar to that. This is the thing, the, the sadness runs deep when you've been with a narcissist and you've given them all this fuel, right? You've given them all this emotional love, you've, supplied and supplied and supplied and you've really got energetic with them and they hit you on all levels because this is not just a physical experience with them with a lot of people it's not but when it comes to the narcissist it's at a whole nother level once you understand and hone your intuition and understand that that's what you're dealing with that's why it affects you so much because you're dealing with somebody that has uh in their bodily makeup they have become the complete opposite of the spectrum as you. And that's why a lot of times in the very beginning, you guys can get together because you've dealt with this stuff before in your family. So it's kind of familiar. They call it nostalgic. There's a nostalgia to it, meaning you can find some sort of comfortability in it. And if you've, if you've defected from your family, then dealing with it in what you think is a love bomb situation is kind of like all the more merry that's what you think in the initial act of it. Because of all of the things going on, you are probably a very intelligent individual, high value individual. So don't get it twisted. These people will take down anybody very 
intelligent people who have it all put together. They have other supplies that they use each other. And that's why we call them downgrade supply because they're not even at the level that we're talking about. See, the narcissist plays with them. We are their opposition. We are the jewel to them. And once we wake up to this, we fight back, but we fight back in a fashion, in a natural good way. By, like we say, no contact or gray rocking. These are all ways of fighting back, resisting the narcissist. That's why a lot of times they call it the beast system because that's kind of what they refer to it as when the narcissist is in their state of living. Their vibration is on a vibration of fight or flight. And fight or flight is kind of like an attack mode all the time. And that's how uh, a beast of the field would operate. They're on the hunt. They're in all of these negative constructs, anxiety, depression, hate, anger, jealousy. That's the things that they feel most wholeheartedly. But when it comes to love, compassion, truth, justice, it doesn't exist with them. So you can look at this in different ways, but in a sense, now, now don't get me wrong, but if you were to reflect in certain areas of your young, really young childhood, now this is my own speculation thought, this is fresh, no, you never heard this one before, but tell me what you think in the comments. It's just, you know, it's hit me a few times that I've dwelt on this kind of stuff a lot. Like where did the construct start from? You know, as an empath, we like to put ourselves in their shoes, right? We have the ability to do that. But when it comes to the narcissist, it's a little bit more difficult because you're dealing with something that we don't know anything about them. You know, everything is masked up. So we have to figure it out for ourselves through the vibes and the emotions that we dealt with with them. So that's how you get into the construct. In the case of me, I believe in the biblical narrative. So I am going to take it from how it works out with the biblical narrative. And I know it to be true. You just can't make others believe that. So if you're not into the biblical narrative, that's fine. Then just disregard this or listen. But when you're under five years old, to in a sense, you kind of have the maybe the clearest mind you ever could have to make decisions. Who's to say that you can't make a sound decision as a five-year-old when it comes to these types of things, meaning which pathways to go down? Because I say that because... When you get older, for instance, like I just got off a 12 and a half hour night shift, okay? And then I had to drive an hour to work and an hour home. So there's like, you know, 14 and a half hours. I had to go to the grocery store. I had to pay bills. I had to get gas. I had to shower. I had to do all these things, okay? And so you're, and then you're thinking about stuff from work, stuff from home, stuff that you need to accomplish, meaning like you have chores and you have a to-do list, right? And... So these things cloud up your mind on a daily basis. So it's harder as an adult to get clarity of mind. But when you're a young child, now we're not talking about doing all of these adult uh, activities that I'm talking about now. But what you have to deal with as a five-year-old and younger or between five and 10, you have to deal with how you are treated. But you have really a clear mind on that because that's all you have to do. And when you think about it, you go to school for a little bit, but outside of that, there are so many hours, especially if you, if you're, I'm 49 years old. So I was around before the internet and stuff. I mean, we had books and everything, you know, we, you had to, you know, really Google, you couldn't Google stuff. I mean, what you do for research now is pretty easy. When we were children, you could forget about it. Meaning like things were a lot slower as well. So from where I come from, the age that I am, I can reflect back at those ages and I could really make pretty clear decisions on what I was doing or thinking. And they would be, I would probably make those same decisions today. They're like adult decisions when it comes to how I answer to hate, anger, love, peace, how I felt. Some of these decisions, and I'm getting at the fact of the soul issue in the situation with the narcissist, because you know a lot of people say, well, they had so much trauma that they lost their soul or whatever. I believe in a fair God, and I believe that everybody has the opportunity here to find their way. God makes it somehow fair. He gives you ways out if you choose to. And I think what happened with the narcissist is that, you know, as much as we don't talk about it in society, because, you know, society and this matrix that we live in, they don't want you, they steer you away from certain ideas, thoughts, 
and the algorithm will not pick up on you if you're not talking about the matrix. That's just how it works. And what you get into during the time of getting into different types of conspiracies, it it's it's like there there's a lot of stuff. Everything is everything in this world system, this matrix outside of God, Christ, and and the Bible is really all a lie. And whatever was truly put into the foundations of the earth, meaning the rules and the laws, and mathematics and stuff like that. But even that at this point in time is being has been adjusted. Our history has been adjusted and science has been adjusted. Our weather is controlled. Our food is GMO'd. You know, so I don't even believe the cosmology of the earth we live on. But that's my point. My point is, is they won't talk about the young child in the correct fashion. But in my humble opinion, when it comes to certain decisions, like what construct you're going to go down, I don't know that they would make a clearer choice if uh, they were older. And they were in the same position that they were in as a child. I don't, I don't know, but that's just uh, something I speculate on because my mind was pretty clear at those ages because I didn't have much to think about. And it was also, it was fresh. I mean, you had no influence. That's the other thing. So when you get older, you have influences. You got people from different corners of situations like, well, science says this, so you have to believe it, you know, or, or history says this, you have to believe it. Or the church says this, so you have to believe it. I mean, even the church is a lie these days. Our financial system is fake. This world system is built on this the enemy and the enemy's matrix that he's built into the system. The hardware to the matrix is all of these buildings and all of these systems, like the financial system. If it was a real financial system, you'd still be using like gold and silver and stuff. That, that's, that would be a legit system or, or trading commodities, like for real not just on paper, but I'm just throwing it out there because a lot of you would probably say that's archaic, but it's the, it would be, the, that's how the truth in this world would be. It's going to look to some people archaic, but that's, you got to check yourself on that because that's a lot of times the lie. And my point is, is when the narcissist went down this construct, they had clear thinking. And that's why I say that this happened out of their innateness. This was their destiny and this was your destiny. And thank God you're on the right path. <laughs> Because you could have went the other way, but it's sad for everybody when you've had a relationship with a narcissist. Because the narcissist, you got to know and you really threw your love at them. Maybe they didn't love you. That's not my point. My point is, is you really, you know, that they took your soul energy and you know they did. You feel it. And, and when they leave you, you feel it on a daily basis for a long time. Because they took so much of your love and fuel that they left you hollow and stoic by the time they got done with you. Then they throw their negative energy on you. I call it sin soul energy. So they take your good soul energy and then they do that energy exchange and, and all of their negative energy because they're in a vacuum. So when you would react in the past, you're pushing your fuel out because you're emotional. When you're emotional, if you were to look at your aura under, say, a heat light or something, it, it pushes out because you're pushing it out and your aura is out here. I mean, it's close to your body, your frame. But when you get excited or you get um, emotional with the narcissist because they're playing with you and you just, you're not sure what they're doing. Sometimes you feel like they're playing, then they'll gaslight you. And then you're like, maybe they're just stupid. So help me, under, help me make, I want to make them understand. And so this is part of the ways they make you, get you in a codependent state by acting as if they're not so smart sometimes, playing dumb. And so you push, you push it out when you react. And that's part of the reason that they say don't react. Because when you react, you're like, I told you I loved you. <laughs> and you're pushing it out to here. Well, but if they're running on a negative pressure or negative energy, then what, what is negative pressure going to do to positive pressure? You're pushing positive pressure out and they're a black hole sucking. So it goes whoop, right into them. You see what I'm saying? But when it goes into them, whatever is negative is going to come over the top and go into you. Because you're you're you don't they don't have any more room, so whatever is in there, it gets thrown into you, and that's how the energy switch occurs. And then that's why they walk around after that happy, like they can take on the world, and then you're like all bitter because you literally did switch fuel with them. And then, like I say, they walk out there and they're camouflaged as far as karma goes, or reaping what you're sowing. They're out there with your energy now. So in the spirit realm. 
you know, they're now wearing your fuel. So they're covered and camouflaged. And the reason why God allows this is because you went in a covenant with them and you consented to it. You have to consent to agree to a relationship with them, right? You have to consent to have an intercourse with them. When you do things like this, consent to a relationship and spending your time with them, throwing your love at them. So that's where he allows the fuel exchange to occur. And that's where he allows them to be camouflaged. The holy angels have different laws to abide by than fallen angels. God allows fallen angels to get away with things that he wouldn't let holy angels get away with because the holy angels are set apart and the fallen angels are too, but in a negative way. This is kind of what happens. And that's why when they're out there, they're wearing your energy. So it looks like when they're destroying people out there with your fuel every day, it looks in the spirit realm like you are doing it. So you have to be judged for that karma. And that's why I always believe that you need to get away from them as quick as you can or don't allow your fuel to be taken. That's why gray rocking would work because you're, you're taking your consent back. You're saying no more. Like I know what I'm dealing with now and I am not consenting to this. I am just consenting to the business side of it. Meaning we have a business together and I can't get out of it because you won't let me buy you out or I have financial concerns that are related with you. And I, it, it's, um, it's become law or it'll wreck me financially to get, you know, get away from you, the business, from the business that we have together. Or if you have children, you have to look at, I'm, I'm looking at it from a sort of business kind of entity here, but it's not, it's your family, your children. But I mean, I'm saying you got to act with the narcissist like it's straight business when you deal with the children, because you can't get emotional with them and you don't want to know anything about what they're doing, who they're dating. You don't care. That's how you have to be. And so that's why a lot of times you're like, man, I got hit really hard with the with the, the karma that we even so when I was with the narcissist. And even after, this is the thing, even after you leave the narcissist, you're still gonna reap some of that for a while because they're still corded into you. And that's why you're ruminating because they're still drawing off of you every time you're thinking about them. In the spirit realm, that fuel is getting funneled to, the, to them. And as you detach and break this trauma bond, because a lot of it is built on lust. It's a lustful bond to some degree. And I'm not just talking about sexually. I'm saying like, it's like a drug. You know, somebody said in the comments about, well, you know, they're, they're, uh, they're bitter, they're unhappy and negative all the time. Who the heck wants that? They can keep it. You know, like, I don't want the narcissist back. Like they're over them. And I get that and I feel the same way. But to, uh, to uh, elaborate on that as a child, when they got into this construct, when things would occur to them, negative things would happen to them because a lot of times they have the same uh, childhood issues you have. A lot of times it's not to the level of what you probably think their trauma was. A lot of times you went through more trauma than they did. But a lot of times when you've been through that type of trauma, you don't really, you can come out of it not, you're so enmeshed in it, even after the fact that you were so used to it, dealing with it on a daily basis. That's why, it, that's why it's, it's, it's kind of very hard for them to find a primary source of supply that's unawoke. First, they have to be unawoke and you're awoke. A lot of us are becoming woke now. And I believe that at some point curses are broken. And when it comes to understanding narcissism as a whole, I think th that it's been, the time is up. That's why we're all waking up now, which means we have the ability to, um, we have the ability to unite in a sense. The narcissists, they've been uniting forever since probably the beginning of time without people knowing. And now we are knowledgeable of it, some of us, and we're getting together, be it online because there's not many of us. But when people say, oh, the narcissist can always get, you know, su supply, they can, they can get, I mean, you can get many supply if you want. I mean, if you wanted to go out and get low value targets, you can get them all day. Yes. But would a low value target satisfy you? Would it make you feel like you're high value? No. And that's how the narcissist feels. They don't feel like high value when they're with low value targets. They're doing that part out of survival. They feel like they're high value when they're with a high value target and they have them deceived. You see, and that's why I have this channel and that's why 
we all go to these, you know, channels and things and read up on it and want to know more because we want to spread awareness because we can help others out before they fall into the folly we did and avoid these things. But because you went through these trials when this stuff was groundbreaking, you are a special, special individual to awaken with no information, you know, out there at your fingertips for the most part until you had to Google that's, that's kind of like along the lines of how chosen ones wake up. You know, the special ones. And it's because of the hardships that, that kind of mold you into that special person that you become. And so, you know, you may say, well, I've been through all these trials and tribulations and, you know, I hate it that I had to go through all these destruction in my life. I could have been so much more. Well, but this was your destiny. And you're destined to do great things. And you have to look at it from that standpoint because your life is not over. And a lot of times when people would start their life, even in the biblical narrative, they didn't start until they were 40. I mean, if you think about it, Moses didn't, didn't lead the people of Israel out of Egypt until he was 40. And that's like when his ministry's just begun. So don't tell yourself you're too old to do anything. Don't become a couch potato and give up because you have a lot of life ahead of you. And when you start to like process things correctly, heal, grow in areas you just now have new desires for, eat better and work out, you're going to regain youth from that. And my point is, is that when the narcissist went down that construct, whenever they would have things that were presenting themselves to them. It was just like that person said, they took that route that was the negative route. And we took the route of the, the truth side of things. How should I really be? How should I really operate in this situation? Because I wanted to be a good individual. I knew wrong was wrong. Well, the narcissist became convinced during that same time where you decided that you wanted to go down the truthful path. The narcissist, they wanted to go to the shortcut and they didn't care. And they still don't care. But as those constructs build, see, you, my point is you went through the same things they did. You had the same tests they did. They dealt with jealousy and you did too. At, through your childhood, you dealt with jealousy. Maybe you shook it off real quick because it was like you didn't like it. You didn't believe in it, but you still had to deal with it and put it down or pick it up. Bitterness, you had to put it down or pick it up. And a lot of times what you'll find is, is there was a time in your life where you did operate in some of those constructs for a time, and then you decided to put them down because you're better than that. And so all of these constructs, as they add up, I like to, I'm jealous and I'm going to stay that way. I'm never going to put it down. That's how the narcissist is. So now they're walking in jealousy. Then bitterness hits them. Oh, what's this? Oh, it's bitter. Bitterness. Oh, okay. So I could put it with the jealousy. Now we got two negative constructs going to where we put them down. And we say, well, what's, what's better than bitterness? Forgiveness. Or work harder. And, and don't be jealous of somebody, but get it yourself the right way. You see what I'm saying? So then there was times where they got in a fist fight with some kid at school and he could hate them. Or he could just, you know, it's life, you know, forgive him at some point, get to know the individual, and then you'll understand how this all happened and you'll be best friends. But the narcissist would be like, no, I can add hate to the jealousy and bitterness. Now I can hate him, be jealous to people and bitter. And I like these three things. So you, you got three now, three constructs are rolling in that are negative. Okay. Then they could throw stealing in there to where you want to work hard and buy it, purchase it. So now they got stealings. Now there's four constructs. As these constructs build, it builds to a toxicity level that puts them on a certain vibrational level, a spiritual vibration. We all ride on spiritual vibrations. They're on a spiritual vibration at some point that is a different dimension vibrationally than you are. And because they're on this spiritual vibration, once you live on this level, not come down to it, the narcissist made you come down to it. 
That's where you can get cursed by witchcraft. But, but when you live on that and believe it, see, they pulled you down to that level, but you still didn't believe it. They were doing that so you would catch their karma and they would get your reaping, you would, they would get your blessings to destroy more. That's why they, they, they um, transmute your fuel, meaning they change it because there's rules to this world system. So they're manipulators. So even in the spirit realm, they're manipulating. They even think they can manipulate God. And this is the form of them believing they can manipulate what God has put into to karma or, or reaping what you sow. But they can't. He lets them manipulate this. But he also has their destruction planned out if they continue down that road. And it's sad for everybody when you've been in the race with narcissists because you know when you see them, because you're going to run into them again and, or you have a thought of them. You know if you've been with a real narcissist that it's almost like they're a dead man or a dead woman walking and they're damned. They're like, it's like they're a piece of hell that's on earth right now. And there's nothing anybody can do about it. Their family doesn't know about it. Their friends have no idea. Their family, their brother, their sister, whoever. Whoever is around the narcissist on a general basis that believes the mask or knows there's something a little wrong with them. But they don't know narcissism to the level we do because they were not at that intimate level. Only their primary supply gets that intimate level to where they truly know you are almost damned to hell. I'm not saying all of them, maybe. I don't know. I, I, I believe they're all dealing with this stuff. And so this is how the constructs begins and gets birthed. But after you get enough of these constructs, what forms is the entity has doorways in. It's not like they just getting you and, and hanging on to you and kind of making you do things from time to time. Now they get in here. And this is where you get demons. They occur when you walk down negative constructs and you begin to believe them in your soul. Anyway, this is a long one, but that's just something I wanted to tell you because the narcissist is, this world system is a mask and the matrix is, has hard, it's got, the matrix is, has hardware. Hardware are the buildings, the, the financial system and stuff like that. All the lies that are built in corporations and stuff. The education system, whatever, history, science, that's a lie. The, the news, everything, right? The narcissist is the software. They're like the programming of the matrix for the B system. But they're a lie, and so is the matrix that we're in, a lie. Maybe it's a physical matrix, but I'm saying everything that has been built on this earth over nature. And they constantly tell us that GMO food is better, it'll feed more people. It's not. Like the weather's just doing itself. No, it's not. They're, they're, they're controlling the weather. These are things that they're manipulating. And when you, 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 the narcissist is a complete lie and everything the enemy does is a lie. He wears, he puts a mask on everything. The financial system has, it's masked because you believe that it's sound fit financial system and it's not. And we all pretty much know that from our intuition. It could fall at any day. It's just, it's made up. And the same thing goes with anything. With the narcissist, they wear a mask. They come to you and they love bomb you. They have a love mask. When you look into their history, it's all lies. It's masked up. When you look into their future fake, it's masked up as well because it's a lie. And their family background, it's a lie as well. It's a mask. Everywhere you go with the narcissist, everything, every construct that they're under and in is masked up. Even in the love bomb phase, they wear a mask so that the red flags won't catch it from your intuition. And you get that little whisper in your head. You got to give them the benefit of the doubt. How did we all get that? It's because it was put into your head. In your subconscious, these people are dealing with spiritual stuff. Anyway, if you like this, please give me a like, subscription, and thumbs up. Love y'all. Peace. We out.